Every loss for the Panthers, the Cats got a little help this end and a great opportunity ahead with any winnable games on this upcoming four-game road trip. We'll discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Monday, February 13th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're to our team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. Make sure to follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Don't forget to enter our contest to win two free tickets to the Florida Panthers versus Chicago Blackhawks game on March 10th by sending in your screenshot of your subscription and your five-star rating on whichever podcast app you listen to and a screenshot of your subscription to YouTube and send it over to me at LO underscore FLA Panthers on Twitter or email it at locked on FLA Panthers at gmail.com. Best of luck, everybody. So the Panthers, uh, it's crazy because if you look at just these three games coming out of the all-star break you think of two out of the three games which of course you're facing off against the stanley cup champion in the colorado avalanche despite no kale mccarr and gabriel Landeskog not even playing the, this season yet and a great opportunity at hand to win but coming out with a loss in normal circumstances you would think that okay you you quickly move on, uh, but uh, they, they'll move on anyway. But losses in when you are as behind as you are for for the Panthers, even though it's only like four points behind for for the the Cats, it's it it is more magnified during this part of the season because we talked about the seven hundred hockey that the Panthers need to play to to make it and you come out of this the all-star break with two-thirds of it and it's it's encouraging but it's just not coming out with a win especially when the team falls behind so early you give up a shorthanded goal and for saturday's game you think about the it was a track meet which the pace was fully set by the avalanche 11 of their 50 shots came from special teams basically five on five numbers the panthers were basically even with the colorado avalanche i mean 75 percent of it was even strength five on five and and, and the rest of the 15 of it was basically special teams which you know you, you you fall behind you're misconnecting on passes in the offensive zone which which is really frustrating for the cats uh for 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 when you're going up against the colorado avalanche and and the stanley cup champions it's just it's just very frustrating when you're going down uh early of uh, just three minutes into the game and and just five minutes later, you you Barkoff turns it over in its own zone, and then you see multiple red jerseys just watching JT Confer that Matt Nieto is like right there in the slot and and uh, and an open shooting lane on Sergey Bobrovsky right there too, and uh, it's it's and you know with Barkoff missing a game and then coming back and then not having an announcement until basically warm-ups. I mean, Paul Maurice did say that he was going to take warm-ups and then just see how he feels. And it's just roller coaster of, of emotions when we think about whether he's going to play or not. And listen, that hand is still bothering Barkov. Just basically the sole reason of it is that he only took two face-offs in the game. And 
credit to Sam Reinhart w- w- played has played mostly wings since he's been with the Florida Panthers and then needing to take the faceoffs when necessary, winning nine of 13 of, of them too. And with the Panthers, uh, just as great as Anton Lindell has been with getting a little bit of a spark, it was only going to be a temporary solution for, for the cats and just finished watching the game this morning. This is why you're getting this podcast out. This is why I'm getting the podcast out a little later because I did not watch it live uh, j- uh, and and just finished uh, watching it and just seeing how the Panthers were consistently pinned in their own zone and turning it over as well, which we spoke about the Matt Nieto uh, goal and just and and when you when you look at some of the underlying numbers as well for this uh, Barkoff. Lindell Reinhardt line, they're minus seven goal differential, uh, all together at five on five. And it was only going to be a temporary solution, which Lundell was able to, to get a few goals, uh, once that he got that upgrade and putting Kachuk Reinhardt and Barkov together in four games played when they've been on a line together, they're a plus four goal differential. I'm a little worried that it's going to be a little too top heavy for the cats. But it, it it did create a little bit of a spark for for the Panthers. I mean, you, you talk about the the goal that the Panthers scored in the third period, which uh, Matthew Kachuk chips chips the puck to the offensive zone, uh, which which Sam Reinhart gets by Eric Johnson, and Reinhart Reinhart draws Georgiev to his left at it that he gets it to bark off into an open net, and you you cut the deficit to one and there you go that's the spark you needed and you got you gotta wonder if paul maurice is going to continue with that line or are they gonna give the lundell bark off reinhardt line a little bit of a of of another shot too and like i said special teams is the is the is the key here for for the panthers i mean They've been better on the penalty kill ever since Eric Stahl's come back. They've gone 13 to 14 on on the PK, which is very encouraging to see. But Randy Moeller did talk about it in the in the pregame show about his keys to the game puck management, which the Panthers just on that second goal we um by Colorado, we spoke about how how you you're le- you're leaving Sergey Bobrovsky a little bit out to dry there and hitting the net which the panthers 70 shots 70 shots attempts uh and 16 of them were blocked and nine of them were were missing the net so they weren't putting as much pressure on out georgiev as much as you you wanted to and the probably the biggest breakaway that they had in the, in the game eric stall uh and and completely uh, misses the net on, on that one. Gus Forsling had a beautiful opportunity in the left circle, and then just shoots it wide as as well. And just you're you're not you're not you're not gonna beat uh, the Colorado Avalanche that way, especially when you get two goals in a, a minute and five, which uh, with Aaron Ekblad from from the point thought it was deflected when when watching it again. And and then Sam Bennett on the rush, which both the Sams in two straight games, they get some stretch passes out to that right circle, and then they risked it by uh, the goaltender. So two straight games that a Sam has had a a goal when leading a rush. So the Panthers still create great opportunities on the rush, but still, it, it's really about puck management in their own zone and and when the opposition is consistently on the forecheck is really where the Panthers can really shoot themselves in the foot at times and it, it's a little bit of a missed opportunity uh where you you played well at even strength and and it, it comes out to zero points for the Panthers in segment number two we are going to discuss a few roster moves for the Panthers and put a little bit of a bow on this last game on Saturday, right before the Florida Panthers 
hit the road. We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about Athletic Greens. And our next partner is a product that I literally use every day. And I started AG1 because... Sometimes you need a little bit of a break from the coffee as me, myself, from South Florida. Ventanita culture, as I've spoken about many times on the show, uh, is sometimes you need a little bit of a break from from the the coffee. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients to support your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging all the things. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition with just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Segment number two here on this Monday, February 13th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And like I said, I just finished rewatching the game this morning. And the reason why I wasn't watching it live on Saturday is uh, Jacob Winans and I, uh, because we both live here in Central Florida, here in Orlando, the Miami Heat weren't in town. So we decided to uh, go to the Miami Heat versus Orlando Magic game at Amway Center, which the Miami Heat stole that game from the Magic. They didn't lead at all until overtime. So that was a fun game. We all, we were also getting consistent updates on the Panthers game and tuning in at times on our phones. But, of course, wanted to rewatch the the whole thing to get a better picture of it. And we were kind of getting messages saying that Sergey Bobrovsky was uh, not doing so well. But rewatching the game, I completely disagree. Um, Sergey Bobrovsky was keeping the, keeping the Panthers – in it and facing nine power play shots on 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 three opportunities for the Colorado Avalanche and where the likes of Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen and Evan Rodriguez each having about uh, well me um McKinnon having six shots and Evan Rodriguez and Miko Rantanen getting seven each and play, them playing on separate lines as well of Rantanen and McKinnon, it's it, it wasn't it wasn't a horrible goaltending performance in my opinion from uh, Bobrovsky. And the the first one we spoke about the dumb turnover by by the Panthers and for Hagee just with a split second decision just leaving Bob out out to dry a little bit. And of course, I, I guess the third goal for. The Panthers is real. Excuse me. The Avalanche is really the only one that I put on Bob, where Devontae's was just right out, right on the on the doorstep there, off a off a juicy rebound, as well. And of course, you're you're not gonna allow McKinnon. You're not gonna keep McKinnon. You're not gonna contain him for too long. And drew a very uh, drew a penalty that resulted in in the in a, in a goal as well. The one on Etulus Thuranen, and it's hard for when you're looking at Etu Lestrana versus Nathan McKinnon, it's going to be a really hard matchup for 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 Etu. And even as as great as he has been, not not the best game for Etu as he also had a penalty on Bowen Byram on, near the end boards on the interference call. But Bobrovsky was great on that on that on that PK the the Etu interference call, which was a little soft in my opinion. But still, Bobrovsky has been. The, the reason the main reason why the Florida Panthers have been on the run that they have had and again two-thirds points percentage coming out of the all-star break great most times but it's, but losses are more magnified throughout this uh time of year as well so and fun fun fact Nathan McKinnon has a six game point streak against the against the Panthers so and the th- this game, I always it's funny as far as Western Conference teams. This is one of the this is always one of the matchups that I look forward to most because of the historical aspect of things. Because we, I've spoken about the drafts, 
uh, rebuilding timelines, facing in the Stanley Cup final in 96. But on Saturday, they had the same amount of points, and they're both fighting for a playoff spot too. So a lot of different types of correlations between the Avalanche and the Panthers. And most of the Panthers' lack of success this season has come against Western Conference teams, which I have the record actually right here for for the Panthers. Western Conference teams, 19, 12, and 3. Unfortunately, in the NHL, um, conference record is not the tiebreaker that ha- that goes when it comes to when when it comes to wild card spots. Re- regulation wins is the first one. Regulation overtime wins is the second one. So, if, if you're looking at Eastern Conference record and that was a tiebreaker, then the Panthers would be well in favor of 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 those in most cat ca- in most categories when it, when it comes to when it comes to that. But actually. L- Real quick, now that I on the wild card and regulation wins uh, subject uh, for that Panthers of the, all the wild card teams, regulation wins they have twenty four while Buffalo has nineteen, New York has twenty three, Pittsburgh has twenty one, and Washington has twenty two, and they got a whole bunch of help this weekend. Which right before I was heading to Amway Center for the Heat versus Magic game on Saturday. Go by the way, go listen to Locked On Heat with uh, Wes Goldberg and David Ramil. Uh, Calgary beat Buffalo seven to two. Montreal defeated the New York Islanders three to two in overtime. Which the 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 last goal by Montreal was on a rush led by Mike Matheson and Mike Hoffman, and a very close offside call, which was a review that took forever. I was double screening uh, that game and the Calgary versus Buffalo game, and. L- and also the the game for Buffalo uh, and Calgary, Buffalo went out to a two two nothing lead, and then I believe they had like eight shots on goal, nine shots on goal through two periods, and 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 then the rest of the way it was seven unanswered goals for the for the Flames, which it's it, it's funny because uh, Buffalo even finished with twenty three shots on goal. Jonathan Huberto helps the um the flames with two points as well so a lot of fo- former panthers helped the current panthers on over the weekend washington unfortunately beats boston 2 to 1 not not the g- great result for the panthers in a low scoring game darcy um, darcy kemper showing up huge for the washington capitals on saturday and also, the Los Angeles Kings defeating the Pittsburgh Penguins by a score of 6 L- nothing. A late night game there. And then the very next day after Washington gets that big win over Boston, they fall flat at home on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, for losing 4-1, which the, the San Jose Sharks just dominated everything about that game. The zone time, the, and Eric Carlson is fourth in points in the NHL. That's just incredible for 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 him the and he he's going to become a three-time Norse trophy defenseman and like i said only two players have won two or more Norse trophies and haven't been inducted to the hall of fame and that's only because they're not eligible yet duncan keith and eric carlson and both of them are going to get in like let's let's uh let's not Let's not debate that because I don't think it's even a uh, debate, honestly. And but for yes, the Panthers didn't do themselves any favors, and special teams is still an issue at times. Uh, and it you have a really great opportunity uh, for for the Panthers on this four game road trip, which it's it, it it it's it's very I wouldn't say favorable, but very winnable as far as the Panthers and their pursuit for the playoffs, which I said four points out. They're th- actually three points out. I, I said that incorrectly. My apologies there. And it's 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 there for the taking still, regardless of dropping one game and a loss being, like I said, magnified. We've used that word a lot on just this episode alone. And we're going to preview tonight's Florida Panthers versus Minnesota Wild game. 
to, um, tonight at 8 p.m. We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel. And we're at the midway point of the NBA and NHL season, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and to threes drain for, for the NBA. And plus, FanDuel can even let you combine your bets for a chance for a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Don't miss your chance to get your first no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. Third and final segment here on this Monday, February 13th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And some news actually that happened over the weekend is Josh Mahara. Uh, got extended for the Panthers. It's a one-year deal, just a little north over 900K for a, a, a one-year extension. And we've spoken about like kind of the diamonds in the rough that Bill Zito has been able to to find. I mean, I mean we talked about Forsling being claimed off of waivers from Carolina and able to get him signed to a multi-year deal. And Lomberg signed a, um, a, an extension as well after signing a free agent deal just two years ago. And of course we know about that iconic goal against the Tampa Bay lightning. Just, uh, just a few years, just a few years ago that, that really elevated Ryan Lomberg into a premier role for the Panthers. Also, Grigory Denisenko has been recalled to the Panthers and every, every, I feel like mostly every time that, Denisenko does get sent down to the AHL. It, it, it kind of creates a little bit of a spark in his game. Uh, it was sent down on January 27th uh, and in the middle of a run for the Charlotte Checkers where they're 7-2-0-1, third in the Atlantic Division, just right behind uh, Providence and Hershey in, in the Atlantic Division. So, by the way, the Charlotte Checkers also just released a podcast as well, and TJ Schlott uh, has an exclusive interview with Henry Bowlby. So uh, just a little bit of a plug for my friend TJ Schlott, uh, the play-by-play voice of the Charlotte Checkers. And going back to Denisenko, got the game-winning goal just the other day as well in overtime uh, on a rocket of a shot too. And of course, D- Denisenko is actually uh, co- coming up with the – the Panthers after creating a, a when you, when you look at the met last matchup, which is a good way to transition over to the game against the wild. He was the one that created that goal from behind the net deflects off. And then Forsling just uh, grabs a puck, gloves it. And then, and then uh, shoots it past Philip Gustafson, where, where if you remember Forsling came out in, in that game to the locker room and, and was, was out for a little bit and then came back uh, out of the, out of the tunnel. And, and and scored scored a goal a, a big goal in the last last go round between the Florida Panthers and the Minnesota Wild, and that for 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 the Panthers it was the the Cats taking advantage of the Wild's mistakes in their own zone and even strength scoring for the Wild. It's it's a, it's an advantage for for the Panthers tonight. And the Panthers were able to keep Kirill Kaprizov at, at bay. Only one shot on goal the last go round. It was the Joel Eriksson Eck, Matthew Boldy show. And and Matthew Boldy is going to be a a great value contract for the Minnesota Wild. A lot of people are comparing it to what Tage Thompson is um, has right now for the Buffalo Sabers. And 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 of course we spoke about Panthers being in cap jail. Uh, the Minnesota Wild are there in cap jail, and of course, for them and their trade deadline, uh, their their general manager is not wanting to sign anybody to term if they're going to go out there and and try to go for a stretch run because it's just gonna it, it's gonna not give them really any flexibility when it comes to this upcoming offseason for 
the Minnesota Wild. And for, for, for going back to the Panthers, what does Denisenko's call-up mean for the Panthers? It, I, I think it kind of means that Anthony Duclair is going to maybe like another week away from coming back for, for the Panthers. I'm not sure whether he's on the road trip or not yet. I, I don't I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll know once we'll know once he's uh, we'll know once the Panthers take morning skate, which is going to be today at 1230 uh, Eastern from 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 St. Paul. So we'll know more of if Duke will be at least taking some some skating with the Panthers. And if he's close, I'm going to assume that he's with the team. But remember, Paul Murray spoke about how it is ultimately up to him when he comes back. And don't rule out this possibility, ladies and gentlemen, of possibly the Panthers placing Colin White on waivers sometime soon um, to bring Duke back. Because I rather I rather the Panthers try to have Denisenko and Giovanni Smith battle it out every night for for a spot in in the roster while Duke gets his legs going as well, which likely with Lundell struggling on that top line now the the whole line struggling uh, to, as far as meshing together with Barkoff, Rhino, and Lundell. Duclair, and possibly with Lusterainen back at at center, mostly likely for the rest of the season, which I'm thinking, I think that's going to be a benefit to getting Duclair and his legs going again because what what it, Barkov has right on his wing and he could very well shift Rhino to the left side. He's a right-handed shot. Duclair is a left-handed shot. Uh put put on his on his left wing and make his way back so that there's not the the consistent gymnastics of shuffling uh the, the lines as, as well. And you could keep Bennett, Kachuk, and Verhage together because just by the eye test alone, Verhage has been has just been outstanding with Kachuk there. And that's why I'm a little worried right now that if you put Kachuk back on that top line and Lindell goes down one on the on the Bennett Verhage line, that it'll be a little bit too top heavy. But of course we can't bank on Duclair just right away ma- making an impact. It's gonna be a slow process still. And Crystal Ball for me says he's another week away. So a little bit of patience. The Panthers have constructed this cap wise that you could still have 23 players on the roster. Still. Remember just remember the beginning of the season where they had 20, and if a player gets hurt, you're screwed. Yes, LTIR has been a big help with the Patrick Hornquist injury. And hopefully. The, going to the human side of things, I hope Patrick Hornquist is in fact okay, and that his uh, that everything upstairs, as far as taking those hits to the head, are that he's okay there as well for the Panthers. But as far as the Minnesota Wild, going back to them, four six zero in their last ten. Like I said, even strength scoring has been a huge issue for 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 the Wild. They're eighth on the power play, but twenty fourth total in goal goals for and Philip Gustafson has been a great story 24 years old has bounced around originally drafted by Pittsburgh traded to uh Ottawa not 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 the same trade as the Matt Murray trade um traded over while he was a um, while he was AHL slash junior and was part of the Cam Talbot trade but now it's fun it's not funny but it's crazy how now the Senators have both Anton Forsberg and Cam Talbot out. So they're a little bit, they're struggling a little bit on the goaltending end for them. And Philip Gustafson has been the better goaltender uh, over uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, even though Fleury is still getting the 
good amount of starts for the Wild. And for the Panthers, you're going to have to play one of Spencer Knight or Sergey Borowski here. Last go round, they had Alex Lyon in the net, and Alex Lyon in that stretch uh, might have helped sa save the Panthers' season there. So good, it, I can't wait to do a full season recap and look at that stretch uh, of of games uh, for the Panthers, the six uh, games that Alex Lyon did start, including two sets of back-to-backs. So, And one of those games uh, came against the Minnesota Wild. So with... Uh, with that, uh, don't 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 know who's going to be in net, but I'm going to guess that Sergey Bobrovsky is going to be in net for the Panthers. Right now, my laptop says 11:04 a.m. Like I said, the Panthers they will be having their morning skate at 12:30. Let me double check that right now. 12:30 p.m. Eastern uh, from XL Energy Center. So we'll we'll know then who will be starting and. With and this is a front end of a back to back, which tomorrow's game will be an ESPN Plus exclusive for the Panthers versus Blues, which we'll talk a little bit more once uh, once the game against the Wild is over, because this road trip is there for the taking. Because at once you return from this road trip, the Panthers are going to go a full calendar month without leaving the state of Florida. The only road game that they'll have against the Tampa Bay Lightning on February 28th, which I'm going to do my best to make it out there. Uh, hopefully I can. Hopefully I am able to. Where you have two home games, a road game, and then seven straight at home. After this road trip, the next time you leave the state of Florida will be on March 20th. Big stretch for the Panthers. Huge opportunity to get three out of four four points with the most important game coming Thursday against the Washington Capitals, and an opportunity to close in that gap in the wild card race because it's right there for the taking for this Cats team. So, and, and the it's a, this is a little bit of a weird stretch when it comes to travel, but hey, it's part it's part of the NHL schedule, and we'll we'll be we'll be right here to recap tonight's game between the Florida Panthers and the Minnesota Wild, so make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you'll be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure you listen to Locked On Sports Today. Peter Bukowski gives you a 20-minute or less podcast on the entirety of the sports scene, inclu including exclusive interviews and the take of the day. Listen to Locked On Sports Today on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.